Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with the A2000. This is the 2000 we fixed back in 2019. Massive amount of corrosion damage. Uh, I think this might be something I missed from the original repair, and it could also be because I've had things in and out, in and out, in and out. What I mean is, obviously, you know, got lots of solder coated traces and things here, fixed wires and things, and obviously covered in solder mask paint and stuff. And it's been reliable all the time, but ever since I did the repair, this is what I think is a follow on from the repair, it's uh, just glitched from time to time with the controllers. You remember there was a video where we fixed the control, I think it was on this board actually, um, but there was always this issue where one game would start on its own, I think it was Time Gal, and uh, I've just tested a game on here, Agony, which I've never played before. And it piqued my uh, interest. Let me just show you. So you can see, you've got it on the screen there. Just unmute it. Just listen to how fast this music is. <laughs> it's crazy fast. And if I just press down in the area where all those traces are fixed. Hang on. Hang on, let's try to get the right place. Hear that? slowed down. That's the correct speed. I'll just let that play for a few more bars. Yeah, and if I let go. <laughs> Super speed. Yeah, it's an interrupt problem. And how I know that, if I switch that off, uh, stick uh, sys testing, and we boot that, my first thought was, well, it's an interrupt problem. It's going too fast. I hadn't worked out the pressure sensitive issue with the board at that point. And I was like, is it a CIA raising an interrupt? Is it well, interrupt railway level one IRQ? Often I can get into this and there's a clue there. It's a spurious IRQs and there's a counter that counts upwards. So I'm trying to not move the mouse now because moving the mouse may actually, no, it's triggered again. Yeah, I can't honestly get it to even boot into that. Just, you know, you see now it's level three IRQ, it's level one before. So we've got an interrupt problem. Now, rather than spend an eternity trying to work out what is going on, which wire it is, because it's one of these wires, one of these wires just needs to be unblocked, a piece of carnar through, soldered on both sides. It really is going to be that simple. The easy way to work that out is probably just to logic probe the interrupt stuff on the CPU here. Whichever one of those is going to be high impedance floating, it's going to be the one, I think. Uh, we may see one of them stuck low. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get the logic probe and have a probe around there, see if we can find the pin, and then we'll press the board, see if we can influence that uh, signal coming back. And obviously, if it's not coming to this socket here, because this is going to be what it is, yeah, you know, in theory, it could be something going further into the board there, but the traces here that get corroded on these, it's 99% of them is are related to the CPU here and the CPU slot. We've not actually got a CPU that makes it easy to probe. But you could probe the pins of the CPU just as easily there if there was a 68K fitted. Um, yeah, and I've obviously just missed one trace there. Uh, and that's the sort of trace that would be easy to miss because you know what? I boot games on this and they all work. Most stuff just works normally, even with the interrupt problem. Um, so this is uh, the sort of thing that would be pretty hard to determine is uh, you know an issue on a board unless you test a wide variety of software. Uh, and as I say, I can load other games. I could boot the compact flash on this and it boots every single time. And I can load other games and they work fine. No issues, no speed issues. So it all depends on the software that's running, whether it can handle those uh, spurious interrupts. Uh, and I'll stick a screenshot up here. You can see the uh, thing I was told about where it says spurious IRQs and that counter just goes up exponentially really, really fast. You know, like within a few seconds, you're up to f beyond 5,000 or something. So yeah, something on here is, uh, you know, believing there's an interrupt being raised when there actually isn't. So certainly not obvious what the fault is here. I probed the uh, IPL lines on the CPU somewhere up here, like 23, 24, 25, or 24, 25, 26. Um, activity on all of them. Uh, I think one of them was high, but that doesn't get influenced by pressure on the board. And on Paula, same thing, checked all the IPL connections activity on all of them and the interrupt connections activity on all of them so it's not like stuck low hopefully you can hear the heater is on at the moment so it's a bit uh, noisy the fun there but if i logic probe these wires logic probe is your friend when it comes to corrosion like this because you can probe one side then the other and just look for any high impedance connections and the interesting thing is whilst i didn't find any high impedance connections here, you see activity on everything yeah Activity, activity all over the place. When I came to these ones down here, listen. 
sound normal. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? The slightest little bit of pressure on that one pin. So, yeah, I think it's that one. So it's fast again. Slow. Release. Yeah, so it's that top volume there. I'm just going to just measure on connectivity to work out where that goes. Is it one of the IPL lines here? Or does it go somewhere else? Yeah, so, so surprisingly, that goes to pin 10, which is DTAC, which is uh, data transfer acknowledge, isn't it? Um, so, I don't know, is it a red herring? Is it a case of pressing here is influencing something nearby? But I mean, I'm literally, just, I was touching it, just feather light touching it, and then it was working. So, one, hang on, two. Yeah, pin 10. Feather light touch, and it's there. So it could be something around that that's balked, actually. I was about to show you a picture. I'll stick that up as a freeze frame in a minute anyway. But if you've not got a microscope, use the uh, zoom on your camera. If I just uh, try and uh, get there, can you see? Well, you can look really close. I mean, look at how horrendous it looks around. It's really dirty. Uh, the via, where's it gone? There. So the top via, can you see there's a little uh, black mark? really hard to hold this there's a little line there i'll put you a freeze frame up and indicate but that's what it is so i'm just going to just uh, solder a piece of kyna across there that's why the slightest like hairline pressure and that was uh, fixing my problem so this area is so confined and it's uh, so uh, small here i'm not even sure you're going to be able to see me uh, try to fix this you know i've forgotten which one it was already it was the top one wasn't it, it was there um yeah so i'm just going to get a tiny bit of flux there and uh, you're probably going to have to show you an after uh, shot here because <laughs> I can't see I can't even get to it because the camera's in the way so I've got a piece of Kynar exposed there I need to bend this in such a way that I can sort of push it downwards like this here yeah and then cut off the excess and I need to obviously solder it onto both points at once but trying to do this in film this is impossible I need some magnification so can you see that fixed wire there? I'm not sure. It's so tiny. Yeah, it's just coming up on the wire onto the trace. So I'll probably stick a little bit of green nail polish over that afterwards, like that's set. Anyway, right now I just need to just uh, clean up around there. I'm going to give this uh, board a bit of a brush down, a hoover, and uh, wipe with some cotton swabs anyway, because it's, well, in the last three years or so, it's been used an awful lot, and it's not been cleaned, and it's been out for long periods of time, and it's just got loads of dust and fluff and hairs and things on it but hopefully that'll fix it so it's still not 100% working um, I'm going to try and test agony again but in the uh, test kit it's coming up with the spurious interrupts again and obviously crashing out with uh, you know unexpected IRQs and stuff but not when using the 68k CPU there it seems alright so I, I think maybe that DTAC signal ain't getting to the CPU socket might actually need to just uh, redo that fix there and solder it straight through on the other side and make sure it is joining to the other side. But everything's fine here in terms of the timers. And we haven't got any uh, counting thing here. If I now swap back over to the uh, CF536, and I'm not ruling out a problem with the 536 because I had this on uh, the other 2000 board the other day and I had it lifted on its side, running on its side and it fell and then I got a green and a red screen for blooming ages until eventually it just mysteriously started working again. And I have had that problem just a little bit, so let's just see what happens now. I've got to try and go straight into the CIA stuff. Oh look, it's booted again, it's bombed again. So I'll stick the CF card back in and we'll just see if Agony is any different. It, it could be, as well as on the top side here, that it's not going through to the underside, which leads to the CPU slot. So this is, quite frankly, driving me nuts. I plugged the uh, two wires there, next to each other. No different, just the same. And if you just touch it, the sound is normal. Often it will crash uh, at that point as well. So we seem to be just, like, I don't know, adding a bit of capacitance, which seems to solve it. So I've checked everything else around here, uh, including these connections here to the CPU slot. And they're both there. So it's not these wires, but we do know if we touch that uh, one particular wire, the sound comes back. And it's just literally a touch, a hairline touch. You know, finger light, just a feather light. Um, so the resistor array here, I was just checking this actually. And between VCC, if we can find blooming VCC, where's VCC now? Yeah, it's like a resistance that climbs 
I'll show you this on meter, yeah? So it's a pull up, I'm connecting to VCC here. Look. What the so that resistor array has not got a healthy five volt. It's going via resistance, 185 ohms. Um, assuming that is the VCC pin, let's just uh, double check that. Yeah, I'm getting 4K7 there. I don't you can just about see that on the bottom pin there. So that top one is VCC, and we got 180 ohms or ish. So I'm just going to solder a wire from there to uh, the nearest VCC point. It's probably going to be one of these rails here, actually. And uh, hopefully that'll fix it. It's interesting, though, because, it, well, it's just weird, isn't it? It's like the, the pull-up is not strong enough, I think, and a bit variable, perhaps. So as you can hear, working normally, I actually don't think there was a fault at all. Yeah, I think the issue is the 536 actually, and it's not a fault with it, it's a case of the Rev4 board here. By the time they got to Commodore, you know, by the time Commodore got to the Rev6, they had added an additional resistor on the DTAC line. And that's what it is. We were adding a bit of capacitance by touching it with a metal tool, um, and that was having a similar sort of effect. But yeah, I've added a 560 ohm resistor. It's supposed to be 470. I just I've got some somewhere. I thought, well, 560 is near enough to test it. So I've soldered that. I'll show you where on the underside between the uh, point where it goes to the resistor pack, the existing one, and five volts. Um, then it fixes it. So I'll test with the um, test kit now. See if the uh, unexpected IRQs of all uh, non-maskable interrupts have all disappeared. But I think that was it. I think this has been a long-standing issue with this board and the 536. And I think the reason I've only just run into this, I don't remember testing this game on it, but also it's about temperature. In here it's like freezing, like barely above freezing. I can almost see my breath. So uh, I, I think that's what the issue is. I think if I was back in the other room, nice and warm here, that issue wouldn't present itself probably. You know, it's an impedance type thing when you get um, temperature and humidity is different it can affect things differently. So we're on the so we're on the VGA display there. The good news is it hasn't crashed yet. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, this is uh, another video. There's some lines down the screen there, so you should ignore those. So, uh, yeah, the fact it's not rebooted yet is a good sign. If we go into CIA, yeah. No unexpected uh, non-maskable interrupts. That's it. That was the problem. The other clue for me was, I tested it with the 68K, as I mentioned, and it was, the problem wasn't present. I'm like, well, why is the 536 a problem? So I don't know whether, like I said, it's the temperature in here. I suspect it is because it's so blooming cold. Um, but the firmware that's on this, um, I updated it. It's not the very, very, very latest one. Stephen's got an updated one that fixes something to do with CDTV, I think. So I'll test that next, I think. I just haven't had a minute. But we've just got to the bottom of an outstanding long-term thing that kicked in at some point, maybe temperature layered. But trust me, there's no fault on this board. I actually think that needs a mod. If you've got a Rev4 board, it needs the mod. Because Commodore fit that on the Rev6. And the actual resistor pack size difference is going to be sort of different as well. So even though this is working for me now with a 560 ohm resistor, it might still not be optimal. You might need to actually change the main resistor pack. These here, these differ from the Rev6 board. Uh, and in fact one of them may be removed on the Rev6 board um, but yeah according to the Rev6 schematics the resistor pack here is somewhat like 2.7k or somewhat like that I think I'll stick it up there if I'm wrong um, and then in uh, parallel with the uh, resistor for the DTAC there's a 470 ohm now I do distinctly remember playing around with those on the Rev6 because Commodore uh, recommended you reduce them further I think maybe 260 ohm or something on the Rev6, I haven't done that. I did that on mine and I had all sorts of problems and I reverted back to 470s. Um, because there's two, there's one on another signal there. So you know what, I might just have a look back at the schematics now, see where the other one goes and stick a 460, well 560, I'll just replicate what I've done with this one, and stick a 560 on the other one as well and then hopefully it should be still working. But that has solved my problem, That is that is definitely the issue. The DTAC wasn't being pulled uh, strong enough towards VCC. And there's my 560 ohm resistor. I'm just going to leave that in place for the moment. Actually it works with 560 ohms but 470 is what is fitted on the R6. The uh, resistor pack underneath is here. So VCC is this top pin and then it's just going to the top of the two wires there. 
And just looking at the schematic so you can see the other trace is VPA. So I'll add a 470 ohm resistor on that and I'll change the one I've referred to 470 but I'll do that off camera. Anyway, I do hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel please leave me coffee and Patreon links down below. You can join as a YouTube member and we've got some merch. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next video.